Welcome to the Frequency TJ podcast. I am your host, Ruth, and with me today, I have the absolute force of nature here to bring the fierce, wild, and divine feminine back, Shannon Valance. Shannon is well known for her soul leadership mentoring, ancient meditation courses, and powerful ceremonies, which I have attended, and they are certainly powerful. She's certified in so many things, NLP, hypnosis, has completed two Reiki masterships, as well as completing completing studies under a South African shaman called Sangoma, and complete, completing the Munikai rites as well, which I actually want to ask you about because they sound fascinating. Um, Shannon works with creatives, leaders, uh, business owners to help them move through blocks, po- both uh, personal and professional, so they can shine their authentic light onto the world. And I think we can all agree that that is absolutely necessary now more than ever. Uh, Shannon's passion is the practice of healing as well as women's empowerment. And in just the small amount of time that I have hung out with Shannon, um, and attending one of her powerful events, um, I can attest to her gift that she has of shaking the absolute shit out of you. Whatever's not meant to be there just, just falls away. And, and, and just to be left with inspiration so that you can be your true unapologetic self. Shannon, it's an absolute honor to have you on my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? Great. And thank you for having me. I love I love listening to um, intros. I'm just like, wow, I sound amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you are amazing, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You know, and one of the things I'll touch on straight away is this, um, this ability of mine to have impact in space and to have impact uh, wherever I go and whatever I'm doing. And for a long time, um, that wasn't necessarily a positive experience for me. But through, <laughs> but through, but through, you know, learning about myself and learning about what it means to be a human being, um, you know, I've I've been able to actually leverage that impact I have into being something that's really positive, a positive force in the world. Um, people do naturally have very strong responses to me. They will either be totally 100% on board and they're like, whatever that woman is doing, saying, having, I am fucking on board. (laughs) Or it will be the opposite where they're just like, get me out of this room. Mm. Um, So I've learned to really work with that and trust who is drawn to me is you know, my medicine will come through for them. But I believe that to be true of everyone, that we all have our unique um, medicine for this world that is in a state of sickness. Um, And it's our, you know, job, I suppose, if you like, to work through um, our humanness uh, and really connect into that soul leadership, which, you know... um, guides us with such a beautiful beautiful light Mm. Mm. yes beautiful so i want to ask you because i i I always find this necessary when when it comes to any kind of you know successful mentor mentors or coaches or anything like that there's always that pre-coach pre-mentor story you know Mm -hmm. where there was a lot of challenges Mm. um you know the the things that that made you into the mentor you are today into the mm-hmm. the coach or wh- whatever you want to call yourself that you are today those things that you know didn't break you completely but they they definitely you know had a massive impact in your life and mm-hmm. they those things are the reasons that you're so impactful today and mm-hmm. I, I i want if you wouldn't mind to share, what is your pre-coach story? What is your pre-mentor story? What mm. what were those things mm. that led you into the incredible force of nature that you are today? Look, well, there's there's 
there's loads. Look, so many. I was so incredibly uncomfortable in my own skin for so long. Um, and, you know, there's lots of stories behind that. But one of the things I want to um, just say, first of all, I don't identify with being a coach or a wife. <laughs> My bad. I will use that I word do know again. Why. I do, do, do know why because I, yeah. I think I'm a reverse coach, but we can we can go into that. We can okay, like, great. Sort of unlearning, you know, the unlearning. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. But uh, we'll, we, can, we can go more into that um, afterwards. But one of, one of the things that, you know, I don't hold on to a lot of, beliefs because I believe as we we move and grow and change in the world that our belief systems adapt around that Mm -hmm. but one thing that I am um, really solid on and I've always been really solid on is I believe we are born perfect I believe you know as we little bubbies you know little innocent souls that come into this world um, we come with the best of intentions and we come pure and perfect um, if we can, if our human brain can grasp a concept of that or an idea of that, um, and what happens is, you know, then, then, then life. <laughs> Hell yeah! So it begins to really warp um, everything around our perfection, around our our soul, um, and you know, then we have this journey of sort of unlearning all those things that um, these patterns and conditionings and experiences we have in the world, um, you know, we have the job of really unlearning all of that just, again, to reveal um, the perfection that we always were. So, um, you know, when people sort of think, well, you know, what is the point of life? I don't know. (laughs) And that's the end of the interview. Thanks so much, uh... no idea but um but i trust the drive that comes from that soul when we are Mm. pulling when we are removing ourselves or when we are working through the conditioning and working through um the experiences that have perhaps pulled us away from our soul alignment um from living in a way where our soul is leading the way um you know that uh you know that that pull that drive that passion that so authentically and naturally comes from that space, I believe in that. Mm. So I let go of anything beyond that. Mm. Um, So when we talk about, you know, my experiences in the world, there's been a lot of traumatic um, experiences that really sort of um, shifted who I was and, and what my belief systems were. And I had a lot of um, many, many years of, of unpacking that. And it started early on, you know, with experiencing sexual abuse, which I think started around five. I, I actually, you know, don't have absolute clarity on that. Um, but that really disconnected me from my physical body, um, from my sexuality, from my sensuality, and ultimately from my femininity. Um, I adapted a very masculine way in the world Um, and that was very much about, you know, if I am like a man, then they can't fuck with me. (laughs) I resonate with that so much. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah, and it's a lot of women. It's a lot of women. We all cope with this because really... You know, sexual abuse is so prevalent, um, so prevalent. It's it's incredible, um, and really, just the the scale of it shifts. Um, whether it's the messaging in our society, whether it's you know just the misogynistic stuff that we grow up with, it all impacts our sensuality and sexuality, which is essentially abuse of of that sacred right of us in our bodies. You know, we start to feel unsafe in our bodies. So yeah, so I, I very much adapted a, a masculine way, mm. um, and I was still incredibly uncomfortable because I wasn't living authentically. So I was, I had constant um, imposter syndrome. I, you know, went through, you know, layers and layers of stuff. You know, human stuff as we do. But one of the things that that happened is I became quite successful in my career because, you know, we're living in these patriarchal systems that 
Yeah, they're very actually, you know, operating in a masculine way brings its rewards. You know, you start to earn shitloads of money, you climb up the ladder, you know, you, you, you're action man, you know, you're making stuff happen, you fucking work like a Trojan, you know, like all this sort of stuff. Like this masculine behaviour is actually really rewarded in our society. Um, and if we, you know, start to move towards the feminine, it's very much, we're very much taught that that's, that's weak. Um, well, historically, that's what we've been taught. Mm. Um, so much messaging. Like, you know, we can talk about that for, for mm. days and days. Yeah. Um, but going into my own personal experience, I had this, you know, success um, over, you know, close to 20 years of, um, you know, climb my way to the top and, you know, I had a, a really good job with great titles and good pay and, you know, in a, in a career that you know, I generally enjoyed, but, um, yeah, it just ultimately wasn't aligning with who I was. What it was aligning with was what I'd become. Um, so, you know, the awakening, <laughs> if you like, for lack of a better word, sure. <laughs> really happened when I experienced my third burnout because I was operating in such a masculine way. I wasn't honouring my feminine at all. So I was physically really struggling. Um, and I just quit my job. I just woke up one morning and I said, I can't, I literally cannot get out of bed. Like there is, there's nothing, there's nothing left in me. Um, and it was really scary because I identified with that Shannon. I identified, you know, that was my ego. That was my, you know, Shannon is this title. Um, Shannon is this person. Shannon is this. And I was a powerhouse in my, in my role as well. Um, so really those authentic parts of me were seeking out. You know, and they were seeping out for, for a couple of years before <laughs> I really recognised them and they be, I became more of my authentic self than I was um, of my non-authentic self and it just floored me. Mm. It just floored me. Um, so I always laugh because um, as devastating as that was, and it was devastating, I really went into crisis and I think I cried for three days it's after my last day um, and people around me were really concerned around my mental health because I was always such a you know appeared to be so together um, because I did share a lot of my internal work with others um, but I did the most white middle class thing <laughs> you can never do <laughs> I flew to all good <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> and I went into a retreat centre. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, you know, I just needed, like, just needed really, first of all, to repair physically um, mm. and to even to start to consider, well, what do I do now? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and that's where this sort of authentic, me was really born or really I was always there it was just I really started to give myself permission because I was in this thing of well okay I'm kind of at ground zero here so if I can do anything what do I want to do mm. and all those little seepy parts have been you know because I was doing a lot of training and mentoring in my roles and and um, all those little parts that would seep out and have a massive impact on people's lives I was like well that's it I just don't want to do all the other shit around it, all the corporate stuff. Mm. Um, you know, and I'd studied for years, you know, so much around spirituality and, and um, you know, um, self-development. I was like a total freaking junkie for years on the stuff. Um, yeah, and now looking back, I'm like, hmm, useful, very useful. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like the universe is giving you training that you don't even know that mm. you're doing for that that future role where you're actually in your most authentic self mm. serving. Mm. 
which is really well, fascinating. I see it. I really see it as because um, for me, and it's just semantics with language. When we mm. start giving it to the universe, we relinquish control. So what I see it is is my we, you know, my I'll say we like my massive huge soul, <laughs> right? That was we. experiencing <laughs> that was experiencing this, you know, being encapsulated in all this trauma and these belief systems um it just kept seeping out it was always it was always within me Mm. um so I was teaching myself along the way I was drawn Mm. to experiences that would allow more seepage um and you know until all of a sudden I was just spilling out into the world um and it was like wow okay this is this is who I really am this is who I really am and then I developed this passion around authenticity I remember hearing the word and being like yes yes <laughs> That's like, <laughs> this yeah. is this is you know I just heard it in a whole new way and just really responding to it mm-hmm. but ultimately you know that that journey has led me to um, a place where um, I'm able to support women to find out who they are to identify the seepage in their world you know, what really brings them to life and what really has its impact. And um, because I live it, you know, breathe it, eat it, I am it, sometimes my mere presence will trigger or glimmer people. They'll become aware of the stuff that is is just trauma or, or belief systems that formed around experiences and that they'll also become aware of how um, in, you know, incredible their their truth is. And this can be, you know, it happens on a, you know, I'm, I'm great with language, I'm hypnotically trained, like I've got lots of, you know, I'm, I'm able to reach people with that. Um, however, it happens on an energetic level as well. Sometimes people just look at me and they're just like, nope. <laughs> and that's oh, okay. Yeah. That's okay. Like one thing I want yeah. to say is whoever you are is fucking okay. And if if I am you if you were not drawn to me, trust that gut. Mm. And if you are drawn to me, step the fuck in. It's mm. just um and, and I will help you find that that medicine within you. What is your medicine for the world? Mm. And it's not what I teach you, it's it's what I unteach you so you can you can teach yourself. Mm. Mm. So leading on that. The coach, the un unteaching the coaching thing. Talk about that mm. for a second. Well, I mean, I just think you know we're living in a world where you know there's a lot of um, coaches and healers, and you know people are people are um, coming out of the woodwork, which is you know it's what the world needs. It's like it's we need a lot of support. Like we could have you know ten million coaches, and there still wouldn't be be enough. Um, but I don't. I just don't identify um, with coaching, and it's probably again, it's probably semantics. It's what I imagine that coaches coaches do, and I don't identify with that. What What are you thinking that coaches do? Coach people. <laughs> <laughs> Where the what I do, <laughs> what I do is create safe space mm. so people can, you know, and I'm. One of my superpowers is creating safe space, mm. um, holding that space. I, so I agree that, with you wholeheartedly with that. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It is creating safe space so people can, can just let go and, and really so they're not, you know, they're not being governed by just in a moment, you know, just for a flash, it's all it takes. Um, that they can feel how safe they are in the spaces that, that I create. Um, again, you know, there's layers to, to, to doing that. Um, but when we feel really, really safe, when someone is, you know, for instance, moving through something or, or really wanting to work with something that's brought them a lot of shame um, and they share it and... They are held in a space where um, it's so safe and they can actually express from their depths who they are and what they're experiencing in the world. 
without any fear of judgment, without any fear of judgment. You don't have to wear a fucking white dress. You don't have to, you know, fart a rainbow or, you know, dance around with smoke or you don't have to do anything like that. Of course, ceremony and ritual is beautiful. I love it. Um, but you can just be on the fucking train or you can just be whatever and you can create that safe space for someone where, where they can they can ex- express and you can love into that space. But, but not only love into that space so, you know, you're not doing it for them, but they can feel their own love of themselves. And with working with the ancient energies, they feel the love of their ancestors. They feel the love of the ancient beings. They feel in that moment they just they've exposed this part of themselves which potentially they've been been hiding for God knows how many years and all they've received in return is love. You know, that is such a trigger for massive amounts of work. And something I just want to be really clear on is I don't elicit this stuff. So I don't force people into release. Um, It is something that happens naturally when safe space is created. And... You know, for me, the metaphor that I use is, you know, for those of love, for those of you that love swimming in the ocean, you know, if you swim in the ocean on your own, um, you know, you'll swim, you'll explore, you'll go to a certain depth. But if you swim in the ocean and you know you've got something around your ankle that will pull you back if need be, um, you know you've got something around you that will protect you from sharks and dangers, um, you will go deeper, you will explore more. And then when these, these um, I suppose, awarenesses uh, come in, you've then got someone who can um, support you in unpacking that and um, the all-important in- integration of that. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's the end of that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so just cool. said, yep, that's it. <laughs> yep. No, beautiful. Um, I wanted to ask you about my roommates just started having a shower. It's very loud in my room when he uses his shower. So hopefully... <laughs> Oh, whatever. I can hardly hear it. Yeah, Yeah. cool. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, shamanism. Mm. So you've done some training with a shaman, and you've also done the Munikai rites. Yeah. Shamanism seems to be something that is getting quite big. Yeah. More and more people are getting drawn to it. Yeah. Can you speak about that? Like, you know, how, well, again, how were you I, drawn to it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a shaman because mm. I don't have any bloodlines so, along that. Um, sure. And the practices that I do use, I, I do tend to work within my bloodlines. Cacao is an, an exception of that, but then the story of cacao is about sharing mm-hmm. um, and we make sure that we honour where our cacao comes from and that being served on and that we pay homage to 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 that sharing. Um, but other than that, I tend to work um, in my own in my own bloodlines. So whilst I may learn from um, other cultures and like working with um, Sangoma or um, under the Munaki rites, um, I, I very much bring it into and check with my own ancestry before moving forward with it. Now, it doesn't mean I judge others that don't do that because a lot of people are very connected to their past lives or all those sort of things. But for me, in my authentic self, um, I like to work with my direct blood ancestry. And, you know, when it comes down to it, (laughs) this is where, you know, we get into it. Like when it comes down to it, there is similar practices all over the world. You know, I have a very strong Scottish uh, bloodline. I have some, you know, Belgium blood in there. I have Germanic blood. Like, there's all these different bloodlines. Um, and, you know, if, most people are not surprised when, you, you know, they know I've got strong Viking um, connections as well. But 
a lot of those practices, you know, there's a lot of what we would call shamanic practices in those mm. lines. Mm -hmm. um, so even working with Sangoma and, for instance, having her, um, this, is a, this is a good example to, to explain what I'm, I'm sort of saying. It's so multi-layered again. But, um, you know, she very quickly identified in me something called an ability to blind channel which um, she recognised as like the medicine people um, in Africa, South Africa, that would come in, they'd be in full costume and essentially all the spirits and energies, um, the gods or whoever would take over their body and you get out of the way and it just is a full body channeling experience, which can involve speaking in tongues and, you know, dancing and, you know, stomping and, and, and all this yeah. sort of stuff that, that can, can happen. So she recognised in, in me that, that ability. Now, when you look at, um, so, you know, I could have gone down the path of, you know, flying to South Africa because at the time I could, um, you know, flying to South Africa and, and doing more work with that, but it just didn't align with me. I, I really enjoyed the teachings from her, but I did not want to become a Sangha. One, it's very controversial for white people to do that, um, but also it just it just didn't. Um, it's disrespectful, not controversial. It's disrespectful, but mm. um, I've discovered since. But um, again, more stories. <laughs> but when you look in, say, the Scottish lines, there's also very similar um, practices of blind channeling, connection mm. to spirit. So um, for me, there is no reason to culturally appropriate um, any practice. Mm -hmm. we, we need to um, look into our own minds, my personal practice, I should say, um, looking into our own minds and, and bringing forth what um, our ancestors will support. Because fuck me, when you start doing that work, that, that your ancestors have been waiting for you to do, your bloodlines are standing there, waiting, cheering, egging you on. When you start doing those practices, they come forward roaring with power, roaring, because they're like, yes! And then all of a sudden you've got like 50,000 people behind you, like, you know, like, ah, in the spirit, in the spirit world. Um so, you know, for me as well, when you just cut to the chase, working in your blood lungs is powerful. Um, mm. And I do find working outside of it is at this stage where we're at in humanity is generally quite disrespectful. Mm. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, we say we're all one. Uh, yeah, we are. But are we operating like that as a society? No. So we, we're not there yet. <laughs> We're not there. We're not all one. We're very divide. You know, we're divisive in our our behaviours, and we're separate um, in a lot of ways. And we're working towards that oneness, but we're not there. So you know, we're still babies. So to and to me, right? I I would say to you, I agree with you that we're very divisive, mm. super divisive. Mm. Um, unnecessarily divisive mm. um obviously like we're supposed to be one i think you know we were it at one stage mm. um and we're definitely working towards it and but i would ask you wouldn't it be wouldn't being open to using whatever comes through that maybe isn't in your bloodlines but you still feel connected to it um wouldn't that help bring the oneness into fruition faster and um, I'm, I'm spitballing here i have no yeah, idea yeah. But, not, yeah not if you're gonna not if you're going to offend and fuck off whole cultures okay yeah that's fair enough <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to it's just going to, uh, you know, and these are just decisions I make for myself. Sure. You know, I, I, you know, I look at the women that surround me with the work that I do and they, something that I'm really proud of is I've got people from everywhere, um, all different backgrounds, all different cultures, all working together in their own bloodlines. Mm. But we come together and we come together in respect and we come together um, 
in, in a way that is, you know, we're curious and interested and we want to share in each other's experiences on all levels. But would I then pick it up and go and practice it myself? No, no. If I've got someone who, you know, say, you know, someone who's Indigenous to a particular culture and they're sharing a particular thing that, you know, is is um, important in their culture, I am going to dive in and receive and enjoy and celebrate, but I'm not going to pick it up and start doing it myself because sure. I think it's I, I align with it. I'm just not going to. I, yeah. I'm, I may have a look in my own bloodlines and say, am I aligning with that because there's something similar in my bloodlines? Mm. Um, you know, but I, I do. And, and sure, like over the years I have fucked up. I have done stuff where, you know, later on I've been like, oh, that, that was like I didn't know. But I didn't know. So the minute I do know, I, I, I shift it. Yeah. I shift it. Um, and I'm very open, you know, I'll quite often – you know, just even chuck it on Facebook and go, what's this? <laughs> and just see, is this cultural appropriate? You know, because there's so many people out there and I'll just give you all the, you know, the information and then I'll look at it further, you know, research it further. Mm. Um, but you can guarantee if you chuck something controversial on Facebook, you'll have every um, opinion within five minutes. So it's like, great, let's throw it at me. Let's see what this this brings up in our yeah. culture. Um, yeah, yeah in our Facebook culture, and uh, and I'll go from there. Beautiful. Mm. Um, I love that you're so open about being, you know, making mistakes. And being oh, yeah. Wrong. And I think, like, coming from a society for so long, especially, like, when social media popped up, and it's, like, all these, you know, <laughs> people just, like, shiny perfect lives and and especially like i know you're not a coach but you know coaches yeah. and and mentors and yeah. and all that kind of stuff like and they're like this is what this, you know these are the 10 steps that i you know as soon as i wake up at 4 a.m in the morning i do all these yeah. things and my life is amazing because oh, I do all yeah. these and things. and my favorite too. one my favorite one that i hear we all have the same 24 hours in a day no we fucking don't yeah <laughs> Time is an illusion, yo. <laughs> but also, you know, are you a person of colour? Are you in poverty? Are you, oh, you know, all yeah. these, all these so like many things to take into we consideration. Don't have, it is not yeah. an equal world. It is yeah. not, yeah. you know, and most people that say that are saying it from such an incredible point of, of privilege. Um, and I'm an extraordinarily privileged person. I'm aware of that the fact, uh, you know, that I have access to and. Yep, sure. Loads of trauma in my in in my background, but I'm still incredibly incredibly privileged, and I'm aware of that. And again, I fuck up with it. I'm sure sometimes I say things, and then you know, but I'm conscious of um, you know the fact that there might be that that one person that's sitting there going, "Hold on a second, you know, I'm never going to be able to achieve that because I have these other barriers." I remember I lost a cleaner. <laughs> she oh, wow. she said something right she said you know oh poor me you know fucking first world problems and all like mm, I lost my cleaner how tragic <laughs> the trauma I suffered from that I tell you what um, you had to do your own cleaning for God's sake. Oh, no, so I just hell? didn't I just didn't do it <laughs> so the, so the um you know the 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 thing that you know, I remember just having this conversation with her and even as we were having it, I was like, you know, she's never going to come back. And she was sharing, you know, she was curious about what I did. And, mm. you know, so we had this conversation one day and um, she was talking about her experiences and she made what I considered to be a, a racist remark or a remark that perhaps um, didn't have a lot of thought um, behind mm -hmm. it. Um, and I just said to her, you know, with everything that you've you've been through, you know, all that suffering, imagine now, at, you know, adding two or three layers to that. So imagine now that, that your race is actually a problem for people um, and that ensures that you get less and that you're treated less than um, and that people presume a whole heap of stuff about you based on your race. Um, 
And, you know, I could see that it triggered something in her, but it wasn't something that she she necessarily wanted to be. She never came back. Um, yeah. But, you know, for me, uh, you know, and I'm fucking imperfect. I know I'm imperfect. I'm always... I'm sure I say racist things, I'm sure, you know, because I, I grew up in a privileged position, so it's a lifelong unlearning of that mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. Um, and, and how to support people rather than, than create more problems. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, I'm losing my train of thought now. <laughs> Where were we at? What were we just, talking about? Just, yeah, go with it. Uh, the unlearning of you know because of the the privilege yeah you know, yeah yeah and, so the, oh yes yeah that's right so i just got very impassioned about what i was talking about and i was like hold on what was the question <laughs> um so uh yeah so the you know having there's a lack of awareness um on on so many different levels it's like we all have the same 24 hours in a day we fucking don't we don't and it's offensive to say that um so one of the things around, you know, all this coaching and, and stuff that is out there, um, there is, you know, it's great. It's great on some levels and I'm sure everyone's intentions are really good. Mm. Um, but for me, it's about unlearning and just allowing ourselves to birth who we are mm. as opposed to more fucking dogma. You know, and it's all it is, is it's dogma. It's like, you know, get up at 4 a.m. and if you want to be a winner, you have to do this. You want to have it. Well, for some people, getting up at 4 a.m. is not an option because they don't go to sleep till 3 a.m. because they've got anxiety or they've got, you know, it's just like, (laughs) there's just, again, so many layers to this stuff, but it's Mm -hmm. like you've got to be considerate and create safe spaces where people can start develop, to develop basic tools and skills to navigate their life in a way that is congruent and aligned with who they are, mm. not who I am. Mm. You know, I found my way um, through, you, you know, what works for me. Let's find what works for you. Mm. And and this is why, you, you, know, you know, I teach a lot around boundary setting and all this sort of stuff everybody's boundaries are different you you know you don't have the same boundaries as me but when we when we learn really clear and cohesive communication around that about what i do feel comfortable with what i don't feel comfortable with we start to form our personal boundaries that are different for everyone and that's just one thing that you know that comes to mind that I teach as fundamental tools and skills um, to be able to birth who you really are. Because when you start to unpack, you know, unlearn, unlearn all this sort of stuff through the tools, um, you just start to become who you are. And then all of a sudden you're like, actually, I don't like that. Actually, I do like that. Actually, that lights me up. I feel awesome when I do that. Well, guess what? You know, once you start to unpack all that conditioning, you let go of all that internal dialogue that says don't do that because you'll make a fool of yourself or don't do this because it doesn't fit into our conditioning or our, our, our society. You, you know, it, it, you learn to become, I call it Mrs. No fucks. You know, it's about, it's about just be fucking you and be okay with it because that in itself is medicine for the world. When people see you, being authentically yourself regardless, falling down, fucking up, getting up, using the tools that you teach to then, you know, birth something else or create something else. When people see you really putting this stuff in action, then you're being a real model for these people. Mm. You're not just telling them, you know, get up at 4 a.m., you know, do your exercise, do this. You're saying, okay, where are you at? Let's start with these tools and see what happens. Now, where are you at? So it's really, it's this, it's this, you know, development of skills that um, then enables people to become who they are. And we're not even touching base on, you know, uh, mental illness and, and, and things like that, which is, you know, that adds another whole layer. And I won't work with certain um, clients unless I know that they're under psychiatric care as well. 
Um, and there's certain um, conditions that I won't work with at all. Um, and some people get annoyed at that. But for me, it's just I don't feel that it's a safe practice and I trust my guts around that. So when you've got people who are experiencing psychosis and stuff like that, mate, that's beyond my pay grade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, we can we can work, but you know, it, it's it's you need to be you need to be receiving, you know, care that is safe for you and for me. Mm. Mm. That was a lot. <laughs> but it was all very <laughs> poignant. Like no, I'm great. This is It's awesome. like, you know, sometimes I deliver too much and then I'm like, fuck, now I have to go back and unpack that and explain that bit and like, Shannon. We've we've got a <laughs> we've got a few hours, don't we? Uh, no, it's fine. Um and I just wanted to add to that last point the mm. amount of people, professionals, mm. that even though they might have the title to work with certain people with mental illness, for example, but within themselves don't actually feel qualified. Like, oh, well, you, you know, like, like psychiatrists. Are, you yeah, know, they, psychiatrists, they, psychologists. It draws, like, in, it, draws, it draws in the people who have the biggest issues as a profession. Absolutely, really absolutely. <laughs> oh, my God. Like the biggest anxieties. Like that's why people are drawn to those, yeah, those, they uh, want to heal those careers because they want to yeah. heal this. And that's absolutely yeah. admirable. But the amount of, of, of people, professionals out there mm. that don't feel like they can even deal with some of some people yeah. with like certain mental illnesses like it's it's crazy when yeah. they do it because yeah. they have the title they have that certificate on the yeah. on the wall and it's like it's like guys people whoever's listening to this podcast like you need to find people like Shannon like yeah. people that know yeah. who they are like really truly know who they are and mm. and they have that ability to to know and differentiate like what they can do and what they're not comfortable in doing yeah and they're okay it. with that like yeah. they're okay with not not being comfortable in, in dealing with certain people or dealing with certain yeah things. i know my like, medicine i know yeah. my medicine and that's this is the people that we should be looking out for this is like the truly authentic people that aren't just this is me, I am shiny and I'm perfect and I know everything about everything. You can come to me for whatever you fucking need and I will help. Like, that's bullshit. Like, oh, it's big bullshit. It's massive bullshit. Like, we should find those people that are, are like, this is bleh, this is me. Yeah. Like, I'm fucking, I'm not perfect. Yeah. This is what I, I work with. I don't know shit. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> anything. Yeah, we were just talking about that before. Like it, the the it. the fact that like the people that know and they're willing to say mm. out loud to mm. their potential clients, to mm. their clients, to anyone that's willing to hear them to go, I I actually don't know anything. Yeah. And I and I can teach you how not to know anything. Like Yeah, yeah, and to be comfortable with that. Yeah, to be comfortable and that's with not knowing. It's, the, you know, we we live in this this earth. We live in this earth, and and I've got some really cool skills and tools that I use to navigate my way through the earth, which are you know at times can be really impressive, and you can be like, woo, you know, like <laughs> it's kind of you know I see that. Like so, I do know some stuff of the earth. Sure. But when we when we look at the grand scheme of things, and we begin to imagine. Um, and little glimpses of things that I've seen and my brain just goes, oh, my God. So, you know, when I really know nothing and being comfortable with that, like particularly with spirit, like, you know, I have worked with, you know, different ancestors and, and, and guides and, and, and beings and, you know, every time a new one comes in, you know, I start to understand even more how little I know. Oh, so, you know, we live in this huge, vast universe, whatever that is. And, um, you know, really, I think I said it to you before, the, the metaphor that I, that I love around that is if, you know, we're a 90-mile beach, our knowledge of that is one grain of sand. So, um, but what we can get really good at is navigating the world that we live in and strengthening our connection to spirit and strengthening our faith that when 
you know, as and when we need things, it will come through for us. Um, and and it does, it does. And sometimes, you know, we get knocked down and sometimes but when we have these tools, we're able to, to navigate through that. Um, and we're able to be confident in that. No matter where we start, how we start, um, you know, we're just constantly developing our tools mm. um, yep. and strengthening our connection to spirit. Mm. You know, you know the amount of faith it takes to do sometimes, uh, you know, nowadays it's pretty easy, but when I first started doing it, the amount of faith to do full body, like blind channeling, it's just like I, I'm just going to open my mouth and, you know, I used to be so self-critical, particularly around, you know, because I used to sing a bit, you know, and I'd, I'd love it and I'd be, you know, so scared to go up on the stage and, you know, <laughs> I'd be like, I didn't want to sing in front of other people, you know, but every now and then I'd, you know, I'd jam with the band and stuff like that and I just spent the whole time, you know, um, being critical of myself and, and thinking, you know, now I look back and go, God, just enjoy yourself, woman. But that's part of growing up, right? Um, but, uh, you know, I didn't know then what I know now. And but now, you know, I'll come out with the, the, the weirdest sounds out of tune up over here. And then sometimes this incredibly beautiful stuff will come through. But I just learned to trust it. I've just had, and I've had to have faith and go, do you know what? This noise is coming. Um, mm. This noise is going to resonate with someone somehow for something and I've just got to trust it. Mm. And um, I think you were actually at, I don't know whether you were at that event. Um, I don't know whether it was that one you were at or not, but it doesn't matter. But I, the I last had case this, one? It may have been the last one or, or, or one of them um, in the in the beautiful Manchet Caves, which just, you know, straight away takes us into that feel of ancient presence. You know, we're in a cave together gathering. You know, there's this, we're in ceremony in a cave, like, oh, it's so visceral and so, you know, I get chills just thinking about it, like we're really calling on our ancestry with this, you know, this, this um, setting. Yeah. And... Um, you know, I remember, you know, having having a moment where there was just silence and spirit wanted to um, come through and it's a split second thought and I was like, okay, and it just came through and I, and I spoke in tongues um, very clearly and there was so many people, one woman, like, you know, vocalised a response and... Um, a few others sat down and there was just, and so many people were coming up afterwards and saying, what did you say? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, how did it feel for you? And they're like, oh, my God, it was so powerful and I could feel my ancestors and I could feel, and this is, you know, this is the blind channel. This is the, I've got no idea what's coming. It just, it just comes. It just, in that moment. And I saw you on YouTube that I'm like, oh, this is so why Ruth and I are together, you know, this incredible, like, bang. Well, here we are now. Let's go. Mm -hmm. um, I saw you on Insta the other night with your, your um, bowl and I could, I could see you vocalising. I'm like, this woman's doing a church. She's <laughs> like doing, this is blind channelling. Like you were totally, like I could see like the shape shifting that was happening um, around you as you were doing it. And I was like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. So, um, you know, really, really beautiful stuff. But it takes balls to do that. It takes real balls to put that out there because people are naturally critical of what you're doing and mm -hmm. you're doing something which is essentially batshit crazy, right? <laughs> yes. the, you know, you're channeling through ancient yeah. things from invisible worlds and, um, yeah. you know, it seems very ungrounded but it's very much the opposite of being mm. ungrounded. It's very much about being grounded. Honestly, when I, mm. and this, and I, I have to give you credit for what I'm doing right now, because, uh, I think it was since meeting you that I don't, it, it was just, you know, there's little shifts change. Okay. Now I'm doing this <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm also like, at the same time, I'm like, mm, what the fuck is this? And, yeah. and but also it feels really good 
Yeah. It feels really right. Yeah. And I am so like, <laughs> yeah. like in my body when I'm doing it. Yes. And I go, I just, I'm not thinking. It's like a, a, a trance like kind of yes. situation. And that's what it is. It's blind trance. This is what it is. You are connected into your soul and connected into your soul family and connected into that. The mind, there's always this battle of the primate brain that wants mm. to make sense of what's mm. happening. But we don't know. We can't understand it. Our brain cannot comprehend it. So mm. our challenge is getting past that brain and allowing that energy to come through and consume us. We connect to the earth and we are the conduit. We are the conduit yeah. from the ancient ones to bring forth healing into this into this earth. It's not about us. And that's mm. the biggest thing is getting our ego to step aside and go, you know what, this is bigger than me. This getting is getting out of the way. This yeah, is a, you know, this is this this sound is for body and, and for others' bodies, for others unconscious. And, and and spirit and what you're describing I get very excited about it because this is what I see and I've seen so many times when I demonstrate this it wakes it up in other people yeah. and I hate that fucking term because you know awakenings and wake up it's just so overused and so so wanky yeah. nowadays isn't it yeah but yeah. you know um it, it it really does there's this this sound that comes through me where part of you has gone yes there, there's that voice i've got that voice too we mm. all have that voice mm. we all have it um and it's about strengthening that that connection and that faith to be able to bring it through um yep. and to work through our egoic self so we're not shutting it down um we're not that's saying, the biggest thing yeah, the biggest what if I'm thing. Rejected? What if I'm yeah. What if people think I'm crazy? What if my voice doesn't sound nice? What if my you know, what if it comes out wrong? Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> and that's the human condition, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like, holy fuck, you know, like And that's where that unlearning comes from that you talk about. Mm, mm. Unlearning, yeah, we've got to unlearn all that conditioning and, and, and working through that conditioning. And it's not easy. No. It's not easy. You know, people they these people putting stuff out there that, you know, I've got this magic wand that will will do that. <clears throat> no, you've got to even when that awakening happens, you know, when like what's happened at what you're describing with you and you know, witnessing myself do stuff and, and you know, me becoming what would essentially be the model for you and that part of you is like, ooh, you know. Um, but then you have to do the work through the egoic self. And it's not easy. It is years of conditioning and you need lots of tools to be able to navigate it because that motherfucker will come at you all different angles and it's coming at you to try and protect you from the very thing that you, you know, you don't want to experience, be it shame, fear, whatever. It's, it's coming at you like a protective bear. So, you know, that inside voice will very much be about, you're going to fuck this up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's protecting you. You know, you've got to, you've yeah. got to, you've got to love it and say thank you. But, uh, Absolutely. Do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Say thank you, but fuck off. <laughs> and do it. Thank you, but we're going to try this. Yeah. 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 I always avoid getting into I tell other people to fuck off, I do regularly, but I I, I avoid telling myself that. I always yeah, try and I, I spent yeah. so many years beating myself up and putting myself down. I'm mm -hmm. like, you know what? That shit doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So let's let's be really nice to me now. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I don't tell myself to fuck off. No matter what I'm saying. Fair enough. I get it. Mm. I get it. Yeah, self-love. Self-love yeah. is the yeah. way forward. Mm. Absolutely. So I wanted to delve into women's empowerment, the divine feminine. Mm -hmm. You really focus on that um, quite fiercely. Yeah. Um, tell us about that. Tell us why you think that's, that's important. Well, there's so much. And I've shifted. I've started to shift my language around it. I used to use empowerment a lot, and I still do sometimes. But... Now, um, after a conversation um, with someone, I was like, oh, yeah. Um, I prefer, like, remembering their power. 
um, because it is it is really you know empowerment implies that I'm doing something to them um, where really it's just about them remembering the truth like remembering their power so you know I loved I loved that learning and I was like yeah I'm not using that word anymore um, it and again it's just semantics but sure. it means something yeah um, our language is very powerful and in, in, in you know, just with the stories we tell ourselves and others. Um, but, yeah, I'm very passionate about this and I work with some incredible um, goddesses. And you can see, like, you know, I mean, just, oh, well, you can't see because it's a podcast, but I've got, I'll describe it for you. <laughs> no, no, I actually share the video as well, so you're good. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, God, that would have been, uh, I probably should have. <laughs> oh, I didn't realise that, that. Oh, okay. I don't have to share it as a video. <laughs> I'll survive. I'll survive. You know what? Funnily enough, I'm not that hung up on my physicality. Okay. That's great. I'm just glad. You know what I'm going to laugh at, though? Because I just, I put a shirt on. I was like, I better not go, like, half naked. Because, like, I've just got, like, a, a crop top on. And I was sitting here like this. And I was like, oh, I'll put a T-shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like I'm gonna... sure people would, like, just wouldn't care. <laughs> and if they did, well, whatever. Yeah. It's and fine. again, I don't hold a lot of, uh, you know, value in my um, physicality other than mm. my health. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, the, the image I have behind me, for those of you that are just listening, is, you know, a beautiful image. And you can't quite see all of it. But, uh, um, you know, it is a, a woman standing there with um, her dress held up and uh, she's got her mouth wide open she's roaring and she's exposing her vulva and out of her vulva is coming the energy and um, it, that is then um, laid over um, lots of things patriarchal systems like war and board you know boardrooms filled with people making decisions and pollution and you know there's all sorts of all sorts of things big loud cities and you know, essentially the energy of the vulva is, is pouring over all of that. And, you know, when I saw this um, image, and I never say the artist's name, I'll have to, it's not there, but um, I'll, I'll find it so we can credit her because it's an incredible, incredible piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I saw this piece, I was like, I have to have that. Like it's so, contra you know, it's so confronting the actual, the actual image. Um, but it just spoke to my soul about, you know, how imbalanced um, the world is and the world is so imbalanced, not just in my experience of working in the masculine, but when we look out in the world and how everything's about doing and being and achieving and competition and there's got to be a winner and, you know, this is notoriously, um, for lack of better language, um, a masculine um, energy. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is about um, winning, and sometimes at all costs. You know, it's it's destroying our earth. It's it's destroying you know culture. It's destroying all sorts of things um, that are very valuable. And when we look at the energy of the feminine, it's very much around, on my understanding of it, um, and there's lots of layers again. Um, but my understanding of it is, you know, the feminine is very much about a win-win all it's about you know it doesn't it's not soft and floaty you know fucking wearing a dress and dancing around under the moon you know that can be part of it but it's fierce and it is you know really um <laughs> sorry my son my son's just stuck his head in leo we're recording right now hi leo uh. <laughs> you'll have to cut this out Ruth sorry yeah, whatever. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um I'll be done I don't know what do you need yeah well you do have to wait till we're till I'm finished you can't be banging and scratching out of time. sorry <laughs> he's like um standing there like this and I'm like hold oh. on I'm trying not to be distracted by by uh -huh. this action yeah yeah um, Anyway, isn't that ironic, like what we're talking about? 
here I am, like, doing the healing and my son, my, my boy's coming in and, like, talking about action and time and deadlines and doing... <laughs> you, can probably, was... you can probably just leave that in. <laughs> I love that, personally. I'm like... Live demonstration of the energies. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we all carry different levels of masculine and feminine, of course. But, yeah, the feminine for me um, and the fierce feminine is, you know, it is about... Um, win-win for all about you know everybody having a piece of the pie you know you think about mum at the you know if we think you know again metaphors but if we think about mum at the head of the table you know sharing out the food and making sure that everyone's got clean underpants and making sure that you know all these sort of things like the the, the if you think about the idea of mum or whatever um it's a very you know old-fashioned way of describing it but uh, you know it takes a picture um, you know, this is the energy of the, the, the fierce feminine, but also, you know, like if one of your siblings in this particular family is coming at you with, um, you know, a knife or they're going to hurt you or something like that, mum is there, you know, and she is like, back the fuck up. <laughs> you know, like she's like, you are going to kill someone, you are going to hurt someone. So this fierce um, feminine comes through extraordinarily protective and loving. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know Sheila Nagig is a is a is a um, Celtic goddess who is all about that, where she exposes her vulva as um, a symbol of protection to your to your home and your family, um, because it says you know the the fierce feminine. And there's a lot more to Sheila Nagig as well, but um, you know that just comes to mind, and and that's what this image is inspired by as well. Is is part of that Celtic tradition of you know, the vulva being this protective symbol of um, the fierce feminine. Mm. So, um, you know, experiences I've had working with it is, you know, feeling protective around um, vulnerable things, vulnerable people, um, vulnerable uh, communities or, or, you know, whatever it is, there's this, this feeling of we need to protect that and we need to be balancing things. You know, the fierce feminine comes very much with balance. And it's not about, um, it's not anti-men. A lot of people mistake it um, for anti-men. It's absolutely not anti-men. It's about learning the, the, the patriarchal systems and the matriarchal systems to come back into balance. And, you know, I don't, weirdly, because I, I am so female-focused, I don't actually get into the whole gender thing you know for some people for some people um they identify as feminine they identify as more woman than man or whatever but they might have a penis whatever you know i'm very much just about whatever mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> whatever whatever works for you I, you know um the, the fierce feminine loves into it mm. I feel like there's so much more I can say um, around it, but she does come with with fire and incredible love. Um, you know, Carly Ma is a goddess I work very closely with, and and she's a great example of the divine feminine of the ultimate loving mother. She's known as the most loving mother in, in all of the, the, the Hindu gods, um, and you know she comes with a lot of fire. She comes with mirrors and fire, and and but she also comes with this incredible love. And one of my most loving moments was when I was in ceremony with her, and um, she held me in her arms. And I'd been doing all this fire work with her for so long, and it was painful. And you know, she kept showing me these parts of myself I didn't really want to look at, and I was like, God, you are brutal right and i just just having all these experiences and then she held me in my in 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 her arms and you know i was deep in ceremony and 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 i looked into her eyes and and it it shifted who i was like this outpouring of divine love just penetrated my soul and lifted me to a new place where i'd never been um but she couldn't give me that i now understand she couldn't give me that until She'd worked through some of this ego stuff that that I had going on, um, 
and it was only then that I would receive that because previously I would have rejected that kind of love. Mm. So, um, you know, the fierce feminine and, you know, some people, you know, will say, I feel intimidated by you. Um, but it's not, you know, they, they may be having the experience of intimidation because they're starting to get um, a feel of what it means to work with the fierce feminine, that you will work through this stuff, you will receive love and everything and pure, real love um, and everything inside us with our conditioning says we're not worthy of it. Mm. So when someone stands in front of you and says, dude, I'm going to bring the fire until I can fucking love you, <laughs> and they're like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's going to love me no matter what. What am I going to do with this? <laughs> yeah, when we, when all we know, uh, I'm generalising quite a bit. but um, Yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's is there another option when we're having these conversations. There's going to be some things that are generalised. For sure. We can't but that. just conditional love from just surrounded by people, yeah. situations where you are loved, but with conditions. Yeah. You yeah. know, so... Oh, look, my, my only rule is, you know, don't be a cunt. And we know what that is, right? Like, do, just don't be a cunt, you know, yeah. like be everything you are. But if you are really, you might have to bleep that out, but if you are um, no. if you are living in a very authentic way and are being solely, you won't do that behaviour anyway because it won't align with who you are mm -hmm. um and it's like you know these 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 things that we think we have to be taught not to hurt another person you know not to create pain or damage um as much as we can possibly walk through the earth with soft footsteps mm -hmm. um you know these are really important um important things but it becomes very natural it becomes so natural when you when you're operating from a soul level place it's not not challenging it's it's effortless because you feel it when you're hurting someone you mm. feel it when you're and it's un you know it's unnecessary if it's not a protective thing like don't get me wrong if someone's up in my face and they're in my boundaries i'll be like back the fuck up mm. um you know whether it hurts their feelings or not for me to say that because then i mean you know i'm protecting mm. myself i'm protecting my loved ones um but yeah, so that that sort of like learning where those boundaries are and learning when it's okay to be really fierce and when it's necessary to be really fierce versus you know when to um, you know be softer in your mm. approach mm. to people in a situation. Tell us about your wild women. My what? Your wild women. Your voice has gone a little bit softer. Wild has women it? or wild, wild women? Women. Women. The wild women that, that come to you with the crazy hair and the... Can we talk about that? Oh, oh. like the, the ancient ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, because when you say wild women, I'm thinking my clients. And I'm like, oh, essentially they're all absolutely wild. Then. <laughs> absolutely then. Absolutely then. But, but no, you I'm, know, I'm... I'm, we're, we're, I'm reintroducing them to, to their wildness. So, yeah, they get wild. But, yeah, the ancient ones, yeah. So yeah. the ancient ones are, you know, wow, what a, what a journey. Much like it came in around the same time as, as Kali Ma. And I know in a lot of um, a lot of cultures we have, um, you know, we, we honour the, um, the directions, the four directions. And, you know, what came through to me are these women who identified themselves as the ancient ones. And again, this is why this, this this painting behind me resonated so much. And the ancient ones are these incredible um, uh, ancient <laughs> women um, yes. from the beginning of time. So they tell me they're from the beginning of time and they stand in the four directions. And each one of them has a slightly different, different element. But when they are present, right, it shifts the energy of whatever space you're in. And they are these women, you know, when I see them in my mind's eye, they are these women that have big, bulbous breasts and they have big, full bellies and they have big, chunky thighs and they stand with their legs wide open with big, exposed bulbers and 
hair everywhere. You know, there's no, there's no, um, you know, garden maintenance happening. You know, it's all just as it is. And the same with the hair on their head. There's like it is grey and wild, and it goes all the way out. And they quite often stand; their mouths are wide open. They're yelling and they're calling in um, all life to being. You know, they, they say we're the ancient ones. We're, we bring the wind, we bring the water, and then they have waters running out of their yonis, which go, you know, all over the earth. They show you all over the earth and fill the, fill the oceans and, and fill the rivers. And they show me, you know, the waters of women are sacred. The bloods of women are sacred. Um, you know, they bleed into the, into the earth, even though they're old, even though they're ancient, they're still, their bloods come and they bleed into the earth and this provides the nutrients for the trees and animals. And, you know, they, they, they have so many stories in, in their bodies. They are fucking wild. Like there is no, and I'm like, they, they're here to remind us of what it is to be a woman that it's not about, you know, these ridiculous expectations for us to, you know, look like a um, 16-year-old girl for the rest of our life. You know, we look at beauty. You know, it is changing, but we look at beauty ideas, ideals and it's all like, you know, stay skinny and toned and, uh, you know, nothing should wobble for too long and there should be no cellulite and no hair and no <laughs> sort of like all these sort of rules. And what is so horrific? about that and i know this talked a lot about the feminist um circles um is that you know we're encouraged to stay like children and and what does that say one from a you know psychological point of view where we're, we're sexualizing children mm. um but, but the second part of that is it is keeping us from blossoming into our womanhood whatever that looks like now, it doesn't mean you have to have big bosoms and a big belly and, and all that sort of stuff. You absolutely don't. But you should be free for your body to blossom in how it does. But they tell me, the ancient ones tell me, stomp your feet on the earth and let your bosoms bounce and let your belly bounce because that's where your power is. You know, we, we shift the world with this when we embrace those parts of ourselves. Instead of, you know, keep it all neat and tidy and tucked the fuck away. <laughs> it's ridiculous expectations and and the damage that is it's done yeah on women everywhere yeah. oh so God. long i think about it now i'm you know i was someone who trained really heavily that you know i'd be on taking protein shakes like doing all this sort of stuff putting myself in competitions you know again down the masculine mm -hmm. route Mm -hmm. And I had so much shame around my body, not only from my history of, of abuse, but also everywhere I looked. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was a young mum, so I had stretch marks on my belly. I was horrified by those. Now, you know, I'm just like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yes. Yes for you. Yeah, hell yeah. You know, again, years. That's only been, you know, in the last decade that I've got really comfortable with yeah. with my body and the only the only reason I will you know shift my diet or do something like that is because it improves my health mm -hmm. not because um you know I want to look like a 16 year old girl mm. yeah yeah or what I did when I was 16 you know show sure. um you did touch on this earlier um but I wanted to kind of dive into it a little bit with you what do you think is happening in the world right now well you know i don't get into politics i don't get into um you know i don't really watch um tally i'm on social media a lot so i get um you know i do obviously have an awareness of some stuff that is happening in the mm -hmm. world um but for me it is about we're writing the the imbalance and you know i, I have a very I suppose it is a bit of a black and white view on it but again i'm open to being wrong um and i just think we uh there's this incredible um surge of healing that's happening in the world and we're bringing this balance back and the patriarchal systems are falling and they are they are coming to a screaming loud desperate death right so there's a lot of noise and chaos and anxiety and 
you know, what are we going to do without all these systems and what's it going to look like? And, you know, I mean, birth yeah. is fucking bloody and painful. We're all born in blood and pain. Um, so, you know, that to me is what's happening in the world. And but my focus is to, you know, bring that feminine back in, that bring that balance back in, that, that win-win situation, that, you know, working with people to heal themselves, to, to help them remember their power, um, and it does shift the world. I don't think beyond that because I cannot control beyond that. Mm. Um, and for me, um, you know, I had a really strong, um, you know, one of my biggest teachers, um, unfortunately, was uh, hideous anxiety for many years and, you know, training myself to um, not look beyond what I can't control uh, was one of one of the um, you know huge uh, soothers of that uh, my nervous system doing that. So um, you know it was it was very healing. So now it's just become part of who I am. I look in my immediate environment. I look to you know what can I be doing that is healing, that is loving, that is helpful. Um, and I just don't get caught up beyond that. Uh, you can probably ask me who you know our leaders are, and I will stare at you blankly <laughs> i love that <laughs> do. Well, some I, people call it ignorant for me it's just you know it is it is i if i need to know it i'll know it if, yeah. if it's if it's impacting you, you know me i'll know it i know there's lots of people who who think differently and we need people who think differently because mm. they're taking action in another way um but for me my action is around working with women um, and helping them remember because that's going to shift things really quickly uh, mm. when we start operating differently in the world um, mm. and this time around politics is not my thing but who knows you know Bruce you can talk to me in five years and I'll be running for something maybe <laughs> I think I honestly believe that you you could run the world or at least oh. part of it in a way better fashion <laughs> that has been run to this date I'm not going to take that on I would um, vote for you, Shannon. <laughs> Thank you. Hands down. I'd probably have a very small, powerful army of people. <laughs> you very know, because I indeed. do have, you know, people who are on board with with my medicine. They are loyal and loving and committed to, to, to the path of healing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they grow day by day. Um, but it is a smaller, you know, smaller, fierce, fierce group. Mm. It is growing very fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually checked out. I was I was reading up on you yesterday so that mm. I could you know be prepped yep. for this yep. interview. Yep. And I checked out your Instagram and your followers. What the yep. hell? <laughs> what happened? Well, look, some of that is I used to have a shitload of followers, right? I used yeah. to have a shitload, and I know like there's still I don't know there's sixteen thousand or something there, mm. but um. You know, that, I'm not saying that it's a, a flex at all because I tell you what, when I first started on Instagram it was years ago now mm. and I was in a very different mindset because I was very much around, I was, you know, I cringe now when I think about it, but I was probably being a coach. You know, I was, it was the very early, the early stages that I was attempting to. Um, so I made this sort of very clumsy effort because I still had this huge career that took up you know, I was working, you know, sometimes 60 hours a week and very consumed by what I was doing. So I'd sort of start these, you know, the seepage would happen and I'd be like, I want to, I want to, um, you know, have my own business. And so I'd start these, um, these uh, things. And one of them was Instagram. I was like, I wonder what I can do with that. But it was very different to what it is now because this is probably six years ago. Okay. And, um, so I started doing all these things that I was told to do, which was follow lots of people and unfollow them and do all the And now I realise, I'm like, well, that was pretty shitty, but I was just learning my way. Yeah. So what happened, I ended up having, after following all this stuff, like 21,000 followers. But over the years, what's happened is I stopped all that stuff. I stopped mm -hmm. doing any of that. And I think it's all changed now anyway. And what I do is I just, it's just very organic. So actually what you see there is a lot less um, than what it used to be because I just stopped manipulative tactics. 
Mm. Um, so what's happening now is I've been in this um, this process of sort of clearing out the people who are a bit um, inactive and inviting, you know, more active um, people in. So, you know, it's really a lively um, Instagram now. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but... Yeah, that, that's that's what it is. So like, I'm just straight up. I, like, I'm not like, yeah, I'm really super popular. It's just, um, yeah, <laughs> it's just I was fucking around and and it worked. Um, yeah, well, but you know, there was obviously some content that was interesting for people because they didn't didn't leave. But I was just mucking about. And at the time, I think it was easier to to grow Instagram than it is now. Well, I I just remember when I first. Uh knew about you and we started chatting and yeah. I went into your onto your Instagram I could have sworn there were like a couple of hundred followers on your Instagram no. like what well, did no. you always have that many or more yeah 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 there used to be like nearly 21,000 so there's a there's a lot less oh I don't I don't know what I it was, was another at. Shannon balance you were looking at <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Yeah, there is more sure. than one. There's a real estate agent in Florida. I think she, she doesn't is. look like you, though. No. Sure. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I obviously had some sort of brain fart and, yeah. like, looked at someone else's and then looked at yours and then thought of their number and put it on you. I don't know. Yeah, 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 no. I no. thought that was a new thing. I was yeah, like, that's why when, wow. I look at the yeah, when I look at the Instagram, I'm just like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> what ifs? Just it's what I do. It's who I am. Yeah. Shannon. Yeah. Let's talk about the fact that we're gonna do something really fucking cool together. I know. I'm excited for this. I'm and I'm so excited pumped. how it all just how it all just came about. You know, mm. working in the caves, you know, I've been I've enjoyed so much and I was doing it, um, you know, been doing it for about a year with with the beautiful um Cora and um she we sort of came to this you know we've been doing it for a whole year and then we just had this conversation where we're just like we're finished we're, we're like our time is where we're um you know our medicine together is is done and there's absolutely no um uncomfortability around that it was just like the conversation we're done and and i thought no i'm not done in the caves like there's still more um for me to do there and um so i just again went to the gods of facebook and said, um, did anyone know of any sound healers, um, you know, that I could perhaps connect with? <laughs> and Larissa, who's one of my team members, beautiful woman, um, sent me you. And I was like, and that it was the only thing that, that came through. There was people were putting, you know, stuff on the on the Facebook, but nothing really resonated. And um, Larissa sent me straight to you and I just there was just a yes in my body straight away and I found it hilarious because when I reached out to you <laughs> you were like fuck off you know because of the because who I don't know someone you were talking to had been to one of my soul leadership sessions or something wasn't it and we're just talking about um the experience they'd had with me mm. and then I contacted you out of the blue and we'd never had any previous yeah. connection so this yeah. really was an energetic mm. conspiracy to it get really us was. together yeah and um i found that you know when we met cause we, you know we met in the cafe um to have a chat and it was like there was no if it was just like how yeah. there was no it was just like oh yeah i see you you see me let's let's go yeah it was and, and that was it yeah. like and now we have this you know amazing event which it's only a couple of weeks away now i can't believe it how quickly that's come come mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. um and just you know taking the whole caves experience of this incredible four hour you know ceremonial sound um, you know, full body channeling you know everything we do in there mm -hmm. um and just taking it next level it's just different to what we've done before and, and i'm certainly bringing in more um you know, ritual and, and magic um, into it, that, that, that fire um, and, you know, your energy because it's of a similar um, energy, it's just, yeah, it changes the whole experience that we have. Well, I presume we haven't done it yet. Who knows? It's like a nightmare. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we won't know until we've done it. 
Um, I have a feeling it's it, like if it's a nightmare, it'll be cool nightmare. <laughs> Like like um like a Tim Burton film. Yeah, like it'll be a fun nightmare, you know. Like <laughs> that's it. No, my feeling is like it's going to be absolutely incredible, and mm. that connection to spirit for me it just it just never it never lets me down. You know, when I follow that, you know, I practice what I preach, I practice what I teach. You know, I, I yep. trust that soul leadership within me, and I was guided to you, and everything inside me was a yes from your name to when I saw you to. You know, everything has just been a yes. Um, so it's going to be a yes experience. Yeah, it definitely, definitely will be. Mm. Uh, I am so excited for it. I'm this excited is, too. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah. This is huge. Yeah. Um, I just love that space as well. It always just produces such incredible experiences for women and they're held and they're not unpacking anything that they can't, you know, integrate within that period. It's very, um, it's a powerful experience. It's not mm. like, you know, something that is going to be trauma, traumatic for them. You know, mm. people, just everything that we've spoken about today is in that ceremony. So it meets you where you're at. You know, yeah. you, you retain control. But the more you can let go, the more you get out of it. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful experience. We drink cacao and I use the blue, blue lotus and, you know, um, there's lots of uh, plant medicines and, you know, non-psychedelic, although the Blue Lotus um, does have psychedelic properties, but it's very mild. Mm. Um, mm. You, you won't be tripping balls. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's another uh, whole conversation. And I feel like, uh, like now, more than ever, more people are drawn to this because yeah. they they've got like something is 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 pulling at them yeah to do this to to work on their stuff like to to yeah. shine light on their shadows and and to integrate their traumas and to mm. like step into themselves fully and be as authentic as possible without caring about what their friends or their family are going to fucking think of them like and this is and and you know, you you were speaking about it before that you create this space that is, mm. and I can I can definitely attest to that. Like, mm. you know, the the space that you create is phenomenal. Like, even mm. even when it's just you know when we were doing the photo shoots together, like yeah, it 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 was you know let's pretend to do a ceremony so that we can advertise. Yeah, like, even if that was pretend. I can't even imagine what the actual fucking event is going to be like because the space that you created or that we all created, you know, was so open and warm and loving, but also yeah. with that that sense of don't fuck with my children, you know, like there's really that yes. that that mothering yes. energy. Yeah. And you are the children as well, so there's that level of accountability, like don't fuck with yourself. You know, yeah, you yeah, 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 absolutely. So, but yeah, the, the, the ancient ones, they come in, they stand in all four directions. You know, Kali Ma is always there. You know, she's she's someone, even though she's a religious symbol, she's, she's um, you know, a very real goddess to me um, that, that, that I work with. Mm. Um, and, you know, and, and Sheila Nagig, and, you know, it, it just feels like they all sort of like come in together in this huge celebration of um, the fierce feminine, of the divine feminine. And this is the only event that I open to men and women. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not always, like I, I do have gender specific ones as well. Um, you know, and again, that's, that's flexible um, as long as you identify with being female. Um, but the, the the mixed events, you know, I'm always I, they, they they just have an extra special um, energy because I feel like the men who are brave enough to step into that um, field, into that energy, like these are our men. And I will quite often. I remember <laughs> I was laughing because I always have students with me um, at the events, you know, at support and. Um, one of my students was like, I heard you screaming this thing and because I go into full, you know, trance and she was like, I was like, oh, my God, yes. 
and it was at a mixed event and I just like this sort of like Viking energy came out of me and I was like, honour your men, honour your men. You know, like, it's like this sort of like screaming, this like this fierce woman coming through and saying, you know, these men who are here are here, like honour them, like, mm. you know, like express your love to them because they really, they, they hold a particular space for us. And it takes a lot of work with all, you know, the trauma that men have suffered to be able to step into that space and to be able to be with a fierce woman without feeling just completely emasculated by it, you know, to see it as a threat um, because that's what was trained into us. Yeah. You know, when we have these beautiful men um, step with us and they're able to step with the fierce feminine, we become stronger, we become more balanced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that event at the caves, there's still tickets, right? There is, there is. Yep. Um, and it's on the 20th, uh, at 12, it's about four hours. Um, the event from start to finish or three and a half, four hours, uh, three and a half at the caves. Um, and yeah, at the Yanship, um, cabaret caves and, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a spectacular, spectacular event. It's just mm -hmm. You know, it's mind blowingly good. Like the feedback is just incredible, and and I just love being there, and love being part of it, and love facilitating the space and, and blind channeling through the energy and listening to people roar and dance and move. And you know, some people get a bit scared around you know the whole fierce and vibe, but you can participate and as much as you feel comfortable if that makes mm. sense so like it's yep. a big space it's not claustrophobic um it's easy to sort of come and go as as you please but you know i always say to people you know get up as close as you can to the front so like you're, you're being exposed to as much energy but then just trust your body like if you feel like you want to step in the back a little bit and when we're playing music and there's movement if you want to close down your eyes and move to yourself that's fine if you want to you know come rushing forward and ah, you know, scream that's fine as well like it is about you know no judgment like just let your body do what it's calling you to do and you know i take people through the exercises so they can can bypass the conscious mind a bit to feel into the into the body mm -hmm. um so what is it that my body needs and sometimes it just needs a little gentle hug like this is this is also the fierce feminine working yeah. So, um, you know, it, 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 it will be exactly what you need it to be. Yeah. Mm. Shannon, where can uh, people find you if they want to work with you apart from... So, look, I think the easiest way is to jump on the website. So www.shannonbalance.com.au and you can find everything there from, you know, I run a few retreats a year. I do one-to-one -one sessions. They're relatively limited, um, but I do still do them. Um, and I, of course, run um, what I call meditation courses, but there's so much more than meditation courses. It's where we learn all those skills to navigate the world. Um, and, yeah, and, of course, events, one-off events. So, and I always just say to people, you, you know, if you're not sure, come to an event and, and once you feel into me in person, your body will tell you whether, you know, I'm your woman or not. Yeah. It's really, you know, it's, it's, but generally if you called it all. <laughs> it's a sign. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I always laugh because some people are like, oh my God, like I, I feel like I'm stalking you or something, but I've done every single thing you've got to offer. And I'm like, no, you're just, you're, you're drinking in the medicine, you know, like you're, it's aligning with you and you're, you're, you're giving yourself that opportunity. So mm. that, that's, that's okay. Like, you know, if people want to come in and do everything, go for it. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Shannon, it has been an honour. <laughs> so much fun times thanks for thanks for Love having it. me yeah and um, that was amazing and yeah i i've been i've enjoyed it i was saying i was doing a, a podcast yesterday i feel like i was a little bit more um on uh i stayed on track a little more this time i tend to go off on tangents and i'm just like and then i'll be like what are you talking about you're going off <laughs> into another <laughs> I like tangents. I do tangents. I, yeah. I feel like when I'm the interviewer, though, like I'm better at 
maybe keeping yeah yeah we, my you've people on track. I gotta be action, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, if I was in your position, I'd be like, <laughs> what's that over there? It's so that? much. It's yeah, so yeah. much. Oh and my it's, god. Yeah. You know, this is why sometimes speaking in tongues is easier. <laughs> maybe you should just on the interview in tongues. Hey, I'm down. I, I feel like I'm going down that direction anyway. Maybe soon. I don't know. I but yes, thank you so much. Don't go anywhere, but uh, um, when I stop this, so just have a quick chat. But um, thank you once again, guys. Thank if you, you want to work with Shannon, www.shannonvalance.com.au yeah. or on Instagram as well. Shannon yeah, you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook. You know, you yeah. just, just Google me, Shannon Valance, and I pop up somewhere. I'm all, right, Shannon. The, I'm all over the socials. Probably yes, telling someone to fuck off. <laughs> She is indeed named the fuck you lady by some people, so, which is awesome. The middle finger, yeah. Yeah. The middle finger is my symbol, is my spirit animal. Love it. All right, Shannon, I shall talk to you very soon. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs>